Seeing carnivorous plants trap and digest insects entertains children and adults for hours. For plants grown outside and in greenhouses, they will eat a lot of prey on their own. For gardeners choosing to grow plants indoors, the buffet options are limited. Feeding dried blood worms can be beneficial to many carnivorous plants. Venus flytraps need to eat often to stay healthy and grow. Feed Venus flytraps live food or trick the plant into thinking the food is alive. Let's explore how Venus flytraps work to learn why. Each lobe has two to four trigger hairs. Once a trigger hair is touched, an electrical signal is sent to the other lobe. This electrical information is translated into a chemical calcium wave. One touch of the trigger hair does not make the wave of energy large enough for the trap to close. If the trigger hair is touched again within 20 to 30 seconds, the action potential electrically excites the trap and the lobe snaps shut. If the insect doesn't trigger the hair a second time, they get to escape. Insects that aren't lucky are imprisoned by the teeth-like cilia. From the fifth action potential on, the Venus flytrap starts producing digestive enzymes. So if you feed your Venus flytrap pre-killed prey, the trap may reopen since there is no struggling. Venus flytraps have evolved to wait for multiple bumps to conserve energy. Venus flytrap ancestors that tried to digest a stick or a rain droplet wasted energy, produced less seed, and did not pass on those genes. The more the prey struggles, the tighter the lobe shut. After an hour or so, the trap is locked completely. Depending on the size, it can take 4 to 10 days for the prey to be digested. When finished, the lobes open. Wind, rain, or another bug remove the exoskeleton and the snare is reset. Any trap that is open is ready to eat. In the wild, Venus flytraps don't actually eat a lot of flies. Check out these numbers from a recent study. A small container of dried blood worms will give your plants an extra boost and the container will last for years. When choosing a container, make sure there are no additives. Rehydrate the dried blood worms by adding several drops of water. Once hydrated, you will have a small meatball. Remove the extra water with a paper towel. Using a toothpick or forceps, take a small amount from the meatball. The piece should be one-third the size of the trap. Too big of a piece will work, but the trap will die after the digestion. Traps can reopen three or four times. Choose one trap and feed it repeatedly. This will result in a better looking plant. Place the food into the trap and touch the inside trigger hairs a few times. Remember, the traps work in two phases, closing phase and a sealing phase. Without sealing, no digestion will occur. Using forceps or your fingertips, press softly on each side to help the trap close tighter. Too hard, the trap will be damaged. The next step is to wait 30 minutes to 1 hour. Press each side again. What you see here is a completely sealed trap. If you don't stimulate the trap enough, it will reopen after 24 hours and the food will remain undigested. If that happens, rehydrate the dried blood worms, trigger the hairs, and squeeze the trap again. Almost all carnivorous plants can be fed with dried blood worms. Place a small amount of rehydrated worms on a drosera leaf. Some species will curl the leaf over the worms. No stimulation is needed. Another great way to feed your carnivorous plants at home is by refrigerating houseflies and similarly sized bugs. The refrigeration process slows them down enough for you to place them in or on your plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society wants you to be successful with your plants. We welcome growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. We started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate these spectacular plants. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite. But our plants do.